Hello, I'm continuing on with chapter five. Um, so uh, Myers is uh, discussing um, gender and mating preferences and that um, he comes uh, to the conclusion that both women and men desire kindness, love, and mutual attraction. Um, and uh, he has a good discussion about um, reflections on evolutionary psychology and some of the criticisms of um, the perspective as well as um, that awful use of hindsight. So I encourage you to read and reread that um, because it's a really important point. Um, how we, how we um, think about things is often illogical and um, what he's discussing under the revel uh, reflections on evolutionary psychology has to do with um, illogical thinking and so it's really helpful if we can um, get a grasp on what he's saying but basically he's saying that people um, used to use poor logic in 1920s I used to hear that a lot and think that actually it was uh, poor logic on my part um, why does this behavior occur because it serves such and such function and um, and that when you do that uh, you can find an explanation for everything, but that's not really appropriate logic. And so he describes um, how it, how better to think about um, the evolutionary psychology perspective as well as logic in general. Um, I thought the focus on evolutionary science and religion was uh, interesting, um, and the the um, Harris poll that he cited also very interesting. Um, so it's important to reflect on that. Um, on page uh, uh, 176 is talking about hormones and um, I, uh, I know that there's been quite a bit of research on the effect of um, testosterone and estrogen and um, but he says that no one of these lines of evidence is conclusive about um, testosterone and its effect on um, sex or gender roles and that as we age um, we tend to um, change a little bit uh, both sexes and um, how social roles are also a major influence so you know nature and nurture still play uh, major roles they both together intertwine to create um, how we are in the world um, Oh, um, you know, the picture on the top of page 178, I thought, uh, and the caption next to it was definitely very sad, as well as, um, you know, in, uh, I mean, it's illuminating data, you know, three times as many women died in the tsunami, uh, partially, he says, because or according to the research because of where they were, they tended to um, be at the time. And um, he discusses gender roles and what those are and that does relate more to societal expectations of what uh, women and men or girls and boys are supposed to behave. Um, but that they do vary over time as well. Um, <laughs> I thought the Doonesbury cartoon on page 180 was great. Um, I'm not necessarily a big fan of the pendulum swinging all the way to the other side like it's depicted in Doonesbury of you know men being the total caregivers but um, it's still kind of funny to think about. Um, oh so he re-emphasizes on page 181 two children in the same family are on average as different from one another as our pairs of children selected randomly from the population. So again re-emphasizing that um, differences between people who are genetically related are larger than people in general. In fact, um, white people and you know Caucasians and African or African Americans have more in common um, genetically than does a short person, short Caucasian person and a white tall Caucasian person. It's really really interesting. Peer influence tends to be larger than what people um, might want to think. Um, in gender and sex behaviors. Uh, and the figure 5.8, that's a, um, a kind of a good map. Um, Alice Eagley, I've read some of her research and I appreciated 
uh, learning a little bit about how her perspectives changed um, over her um, research. Um, in chapter six, wow, really, really uh, an amazing chapter full of so much fascinating information about um, conformity and obedience. Um, he reviews some of the major um, research that's been done by you know well-known researchers like um, Ash and certainly Milgram. Uh, his uh, research has been um, reproduced countless times and discussed a lot. Um, you notice the discussion about the ethics of his research. Um, and he also uh, mentions, Meyer mentions on page 197 about um, that the critics were concerned about their, those, their self-concepts may have been altered. Um, and so you can reflect on this in relation to our um, discussion in week one on self-concept. Um, and um, I thought Myers made, uh, by, by citing Milgram in the middle of page 198, I thought Myers made a really good point by that citing as, as Milgram actually said that um, with regard to the uh, critics about his studies about um, the impact uh, to people's hmm, maybe self-esteem but may have been their self-concept or self-efficacy but I would like you to read that quote of, of Milgram's on page 198 and see if you agree. Is there more stress on university students uh, taking exams or the folks who participated in Milgram's studies? Um, it's, an, it's an important um, ethical question to consider. Um, but uh, <laughs> on page 203, I thought the, um, the picture at the bottom and the note on the side about the um, man who walked to Britain naked <laughs> and why he did is fascinating. Fundamental attribution error, page 204, very interesting um, to note uh, about the kinds of errors that we make and um, why. Um, conformity, uh, great to read that. Um, I thought the information on page um, 210, the bottom of 210, top of page 211 um, about the uh, horse race and the judge's decisions is very interesting. So um, again, this chapter is very profound uh, reflections about human behavior conformity. So I encourage you to um, you know, uh, dissect it, talk about it with your classmates, ask questions, and um, you know, reflect on this because it's just really um, amazing. Okay, look forward to uh, your discussions and your questions and comments in the uh, discussion forums and uh, classroom. Thank you for your time and attention.